Today's guests are Craig Pasta Jardula and Fiorella Isabel, the co host of the progressive talk show, The Convo Couch, which discusses daily news cycles and introduces new grassroots personalities. The two are currently on the ground in Brazil reporting on the elections that took place yesterday. Please welcome Craig and Fiorella. Thanks for being here. So thank you for having us. So I just want to let people know what happened in uh, yesterday. Brazil, there was uh, so, you know, it's Bolsonaro, which is the everybody uh, says he's like their Trump. And then there's Lula which everyone says is like Bernie, but he, he's much better than Bernie. Bernie, believe me. Uh, anyway, yeah. okay. uh, uh, and so it was a disappoint. It was disappointing for the left. Why was it? Because they thought Lula might be able to, if he got over fifty percent of the vote, he might be able to win it outright, and there wouldn't have to be a second round. Correct me if I'm wrong about that. But this was the numbers. So Lula got 48.3% of the vote, which was pretty, it's very good. And it was right around where they predicted it. But Bolsonaro, they thought was just going to get around 36% of the vote. He ended up getting 43% of the vote. So that's why, so everybody is really uh, upset about, the lefties are upset. The mood of disappointment for the left was heightened by victory for Bolsonaro's allies. In ninth, so this is another reason. So Bolsonaro's allies ran for Senate, and in 19 out of the 27 available Senate seats, they uh, they won. And they also had a strong showing in the lower house. So even if Lulu or Lula uh, wins and becomes president, which people think he will still, that he he'll have a much harder time getting any of the stuff done that he wants. Right. So. Let me bring in Craig and Fiorella and tell what what did you notice on the ground and were you surprised too that Bolsonaro did as well? No, I what I I don't we weren't surprised. Um immediately we were deciding whether to go for the first round or second round and the reason we went to the first round is because it it's good to get your bearings, it's good to meet people and figure out what's what in the election system. But we knew going into this that it was likely going to go to a second round because there's a lot of Bolsonaro supporters here, not just uh, the wealthier classes, which is primarily his supporters, but also a lot of like Uber drivers, cab drivers, people who you would think normally are Lula type of supporters. They saw an attraction to Bolsonaro because they see him kind of the way Trump was viewed. Like, I want to be like him. This guy's a business guy. He wears a suit. He's different. He um, is is saying things that are that are different. Then there was also the the uh, the fact that he spoke out strongly against the COVID narrative, and there was also the fact that he pretty much kept calling Lula a corrupt politician, in spite of the fact that the charges were dropped on Lula. So that really stuck with a lot of people. And the country, like our country, there's so many parallels. And usually when that happens, it's not accurate. But in the case of Brazil, Brazil is living through <clears throat> neoliberal austerity measures. Brazil has a lot of poverty, high inflation, homelessness, more homelessness than I've ever seen in the rest of Latin America, tent cities, very similar to what we see in Los Angeles and stuff. So I think that those similarities in the economic system really lend itself to two polarizing political aspects. And I think that's why Bolsonaro's, as he presents himself to be a populist, kicks in. Uh, you know, Jimmy, we always talk about when we get on the ground what we do. We don't just talk to the activists or the politicians. We talk to the waiters, the bartenders, you know, the the Uber drivers, the cab drivers. And I was very surprised to see a lot of people working in a gig economy still pulling for Bolsonaro. It was kind of surprising. Uh, but it's, it appears that the marketing sticks when they try to make Lula out to be a criminal <laughs> – uh, it seems like everybody is buying it. I, I think it's a lot has to do to be confirmation bias because I think there's something um, a little bit more deep rooted of what what's going on. It, it seems like to be the classic case of like, you know, uh, the peasant class versus the worker class being separated on certain issues. And it's really, really just, you know, when you tell people don't hate your neighbor. Well, it's more evident here than I've seen in a lot of other countries where 
a lot of people despise the poor out here. They don't they look down on them, even those people working in a gig economy. So they are very, very split. And, you know, Lula has always championed the poor. He's taken resources when he had his first two terms and he's gotten them directly into the favelas. I sent you guys a video of the favelas, what we experienced the other day. You know, I mean, it was it's just life changing when you go and you see how people live. And those people are so down for for Lula. They want Lula to win big time. The PT, uh, his party has made an alignment with the MST, which is one of the one of the bigger uh, labor movements of peasants that started in the 80s. Uh, and they are very much uh, for Lula. However, a lot of the working class and a lot of people in the gig economies, for some reason, resent that money and resources going to the poor. Uh, you know, I woke up today just thinking, wow, I mean, this is something really deeper that's going on. And how do we make that that combination? How do we bring the two together? How do we get the peasant class and the working class to understand that they're being played by the elitist and, and get them to work together? But there is this kind of like, you know, uh, the spies uh, coming from a lot of the working class towards the uber poor, and I don't know why. Can I can I ask you guys a question? Is it similar to America here where, because that does sound very similar to what you described, by the way, but uh, does Brazil have a thing like we have here where there's like a liberal, like woke nonsense thing that they focus on social buzzword nonsense and it really annoys people that have to work, so... They'll be like, I don't even want healthcare as long as I got to hear this drivel or like all the movies here, are some kind of new nonsense and like Top Gun 2, which is clear propaganda. Everyone like, oh, it's so refreshing. I didn't have to hear some weird aesthetic racial non. Does Brazil have that, too? Or is this purely like a, we don't want like Chavez kind of stuff happening here because they're peasants and we hate them purely on economic reasons? Yeah. yeah. First of all, hello, Kurt. Good to see you, man. Hey, uh, and. Yeah, I mean, it's there. Like when you talk to it's funny because when you talk to the people in the streets of Sao Paulo, the Lula supporters, right, you you ask them, what's your biggest issue? They don't really put forth policy sometimes. Oh, you know, Bolsonaro, the stuff that comes out of his mouth. He so he hates people. You know, he's anti-gay and he, he didn't handle the, the, the covid uh, situation properly. And then you ask him all those questions that you'll ask anybody. And I don't want to talk too extensively when it comes to that particular area, because we are on YouTube. But they'll say the same damn answers that you would hear from a Bernie Sanders, wow. you know, a person. Well, how can you how can you trust these corporations that have a criminal background? Well, this is science. Oh, really? <laughs> You're going to give me that? Like, I'm going to get this is the science thing. And then when you live, talk to a lot of conservatives or, or Bolsonaro people, they buy into, oh, this is about communism and Chavez and we don't need that. What's going on? And, and Lou is a criminal. And even if you point out that he's been acquitted of all charges, they still have that confirmation bias right there. So, yes, we have a lot of that foo-foo identity politic BS here as well. Okay. And just real quick, I just wanted to add that there's a difference between the li more liberal Lula supporters because Lula is has tried to um, bring in the centrist because basically what's going on is there's a lot of uh, – situa the situation in Brazil is really bad. It's really bad, and even a lot of the business – Smaller business owners are coming in and saying, we need to get out of this because there's going to be a revolt if we don't get Bolsonaro out. And so that's also what's been happening. So you have the more the more leftist supporters that are way to the left of Lula, because Lula isn't any sort of communist or Marxist. He's a progressive. He's like a, a social Democrat. Um, and they know this, but they they're like, we need to actually have a chance to, to do something, because during his four years, the man wasn't elected twice for for no reason. He like he did get Brazil out of the poverty uh, level. And so they those people that live in the favelas that are really, really poor, they are actually questioning things more with with like the global agenda. They're actually <laughs> questioning things. They're not as. Like they're not the same as the liberal supporters, so it's kind of right. like so. Let me in the United States. let me show you that video. This is the video you sent me. You went and visited a favela, and you're you're saying these are the people who are starting to question globalism. All right, let's watch. Yeah, actually, I, yeah. <laughs> No. I want to see the bathroom. The banos? What? Thank you. 
Aqui é onde ela trabalha. Then you get another threshold underneath that door. It's a little bit. Thank you. And then they have a dog. So, uh, don't. So now, tell me, tell me what, what what do you have to say about those people? Right. So this is actually one of the nicer. Um, structures in the favela I was gonna, uh, these people actually yeah, I was going to say that did <laughs> it, it looks look... like a 1900 dollar apartment in New York City <laughs> <laughs> It was I was surprised two things no wonder so... the working people hate the poor people they got to pay $22,000 a month for that <laughs> but the, the two things well, I yeah. noticed about that video is that the place seemed as clean as it could possibly be in that situation yeah. and they had running water and and plumbing so yeah. I, I that that seemed like wow this so go ahead take it from there so they actually built, uh, they actually structure their own running water and plumbing much of the time because they can't afford to pay the electricity and running water. So it's called a gato when they structure the power line. And they, uh, this, this particular area is, is more, this particular structure is the lucky ones. Most of them don't have either of that. And sometimes people go to the bathroom in a creek behind all of these houses and then all the sewage ends up there. We have some footage of that as well. That's coming. But we but the thing is with these people is a lot these people, um, there is an a, an organization there that helps feed people and helps talk to them. And we were we they actually came together and made a meal for us and we started talking about, you know, their views on the pandemic because a lot of these people, whether Bolsonaro, you know, was for the vaccines or not, a lot of these people lost their jobs during the pandemic, like everybody else. And a lot of places did close during the pandemic, like in everywhere else. And a lot of these people lost their jobs. And so a lot of the people that live in the favelas actually have jobs, just like a lot of the people that are homeless. A lot of people that live that that, that have this sort of li lifestyle have full time jobs and they just can't afford to live. And so it, it is very similar to the U.S. Yeah, um, Jimmy, um, if you I didn't, maybe I didn't go up to the walls, but it's almost like this, like rotted kind of like, you know, that cardboard ply stuff. It's just, it's really, really bad. I can't imagine if it rains, what would happen. And the water that comes out of those pipes ain't too great either. Cause we went and looked at the Creek behind and it was polluted as can be, you know, but, but once again, these particular people, after when we were having a dinner, we sat down and we kind of talked about, you know, uh, the boop boop or the vaccine, whatever you want to call it. Uh, um, and they're a little bit more like kind of listening to what's going on and understand, uh, you know, what's happening. But it's been so politicized out there that anybody who hates Bolsonaro is going to go with the rhetoric of the mainstream media. And, you know, you'll get the same answers that you get from the Bernie Sanders supporters uh, in America when it comes to that. So, I mean, they're a little bit more open to what's going on to listen uh, however, the the propaganda and the politicization of what's going on is really, really deep. Um, so the the polls were off. The polls were way off on uh, Bolsonaro. And is there is is it surprising to you the 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 amount of support that he actually has? And it, it, and do you think it is this some sort of um, campaign to have the 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 poor people and the poorer people fight each other yeah um it's not surprising at all because we did talk to a lot of people and like you know bolsonaro has this image with them it's like donald trump that he's standing up against power and it is definitely a propaganda uh hit to make sure these people stay divided um, you know, even though they're working in a gig economy and Lula has addressed that he's going to take issues with people working in a gig economy, those people that work in a gig economy still despise the fact that he gives that that Lula has always moved resources to these areas of the favela to get them food. When Lula makes the pitch, he makes the pitch that he wants every Brazilian to wake up, have a cup of coffee, two square meals and a house over his head. And when he did that interview with Glenn Greenwood a long time ago, he pointed out that there were so many people in the middle class and the worker class that were disgusted to see these poor people at the airport being able to take planes to go and travel for the first time in their lives. So it is there. I don't know what it is. Um, we talked about it with our colleague, but it, it, it works and they are divided. 
And, you know, you'll hear a lot of people saying, I don't want to live in a communist area where Lula is just going to give poor people stuff that they don't didn't deserve or didn't earn. Oh, yeah, just, go ahead. Just quick, quickly. Um, um, there's also that propaganda that Lula is like some sort of like communist. Uh, they talk somebody, you know, Pasta talked to a guy and Pasta was like, yeah, whatever your country decides is good. And he was like, no, uh, it, it matters. It matters. We don't want to turn to Venezuela or Cuba. But it's like, look around. This is a result of failed neoliberalism. This is a result of all of that. Right. And one of the things that stuck out most to us is the privatization of the Amazon. There's literally like black water in Brazil going on. We, we got a chance to talk uh, to about that very issue where there are mercenaries basically killing a lot of people from the Amazon for their land. And it's all Nestle, Bayer, Monsanto. These companies are basically taking over the Amazon and Bolsonaro is a huge part of that. So, and so here's what's wrong with Bolsonaro. Although he did, so this surprised me. He did uh, in the Guardian. They read an article, and they even say that he authorized welfare package worth billions of dollars during the campaign. He has also promised to privatize the state-owned oil company, pass pro-gun legislation, cut corporation taxes, and toughen restrictions on abortion. So there's his right wingery coming through right there. Um, and when they say that he authorized a welfare package worth billions of dollars during the campaign, does that mean like just their normal or did it, was that up? Was that over and above what they normally spend on social spending? Are you, are you familiar with this issue? Well, you know, we heard from a lot of these these uh, particular labor groups that he for a long time did not direct any money over towards them. Uh, so maybe this is a last ditch effort to, as a campaign promise to try to get in the good graces. I mean, he's labeled the MST a almost a terror organization as they were fighting to keep their land rights there. And the one thing that's just really crazy is the privatization that's going on. There's six multinational corporations we heard that are taking all the the big agro. You know, big agro is taken over from the small farmer. So a lot of this money that he might be able to you know uh, try to dull out could be just once again like one of those financial scandals where all these corporations can then direct the money back into their own pockets a lot what we see in california the way all this money is supposed to go to the homeless but it never goes to the homeless it goes into the contractor's pocket now i haven't confirmed that but that's what i would assume with all the multinational uh, companies that have come in and pretty much just stolen uh, the agriculture from the indigenous people it was a last stitch campaign effort he did um, at oh. the last minute to try to get some votes. But yeah, it wasn't anything that, that he, okay. he was getting. A lot of people were speaking out against him, so then he took that action. Yeah, You know what would be nice if Joe Biden actually did something? Yeah, at least, I, you know what I mean? Like Joe Biden won't even fucking ever even do anything. At least Bolsonaro actually did something, right? He, well, he gave him some billions of dollars. And Joe Biden won't even give us that. It's uh, Is that I, any... I was going to ask, because like, I was about to ask, like, is there shift my focus is there anything it, where it's in any way different than america <laughs> like it sounds pretty much exactly like here i thought it was just going to be some similarities but it sounds like exactly alike except i guess that well, well, package the thing that's really different right now is that the owner class or the, what are they called the petty bourgeois class or whatever they call it here they usually walk hand in hand together they're split oh. because they see social unrest coming all right they see the it, it collapsing and revolt so a lot of people in the in the work in the owner class, which don't make the money they used to nowadays. Remember, they used to go small businesses. Uh -huh. Well, those people aren't making as, as much money nowadays, and they're kind of split because they, they see this instability going on, and they're afraid of a social uh, revolt. So a lot of them, and that's why you hear a lot of people. Well, you know, Lula's being backed by the World Economic Forum, and you know, there's banks that are backing them. There's some like you know. Uh, business owners here that are now backing Lula because they are so afraid because Bolsonaro has done such a poor job with the, the most vulnerable that things might just collapse altogether. So there is some money that has moved uh, Lula's way. In fact, a few banks have moved Lula's way because they just see social unrest coming. So it's kind of like people got their phone stolen last night, yeah, including me. First, the phone was stolen last night. Literally, it's Literally. bad. Like they drive by with a bike and they grab the phone and they're off. So and this is the, so what FDR said. So FDR didn't say that he saved socialism. He's they he said he saved capitalism because he saw 
what they're afraid of in Brazil right now is that the people are going to revolt like they did. FDR was afraid that we we're going to have a Russia style revolution in the United States. And he told the rich people, you have to give the poor people some of your money or they're going to come and take all of your money. And so he did that. And now they've forgotten that again. And so they'll send $100 billion to Ukraine because it's going to get funneled right back into their corrupt pockets. But they won't spend $100 billion to their own cities and their own goddamn country to help those people who live here. So that's what's going on. Um, And here's one more thing. Um, Even if Lula wins, he will struggle to pass Amazon protection legislation. Former Agriculture Minister Teresa Christina, uh, Christina was one of a host of Bolsonaristas who won Senate seats. Well, so again, he's going to have a hard time passing his agenda. Um, thank you very much for coming on and, uh, and for sharing all that. And anything you want, you want to add to that, that we didn't get to. I'm just going to say that right now, it, it was a win for Bolsonaro yesterday, right? <clears throat> Not that he got so much of, of a high percentage. It's the fact that Lula didn't cross the finish line, right? There were 11 candidates in this race. So there are plenty of votes to make up. I think a lot of the people who didn't vote for either one of these two guys just didn't want to vote for either one of them. But now he's vulnerable. And we have three weeks out from this election. And I really think it was a win for Bolsonaro yesterday. And I got to say that I think a lot of the people in this country and excuse me, in America, you know, um, they they put a lot of a lot of the conservatives, they put a lot of money and a lot of energy and you can hear them all the time. Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro. It's going to be a tight, tight race. And right now I feel that Lula is very vulnerable after last night's results. And yeah, I just want to say, I think Lula is going to, is going to win. Um, I think he's going to take it just because uh, so many people are feeling hurt and they just want a chance to like go back to normalcy. And it's not just the left here. It's like everybody, every middle of the road person. And, uh, you know, and I think, yes, I agree. Bolsonaro's support in the States is really doing favors for him. But I think at the end of the day, Brazilians are going to push for Lula. Now, I do think it's going to be difficult for him to pass a lot of measures. And it, by the way, the United States better watch it because we are Brazil in a few years. Yeah. If, if, if this doesn't change, yes. that's a warning to us. All. I mean, yes. that's probably best case scenario. Uh, yeah. Well, Dylan Radigan said we are already Brazil, except that we have like a few cities like we have. We're like Brazil, but we have New York, L.A., in us in Chicago or something. He was said something like that. But anyway, uh, Fiorella Isabel and Craig Pasta Jardula, the hosts of the Convo Couch. Thanks so much for coming on and everybody check out their reporting from Brazil. It's fantastic. Virginia Beach, Richmond, Arlington, San Jose, Miami, West Palm Beach. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all the tickets and become a premium member while you're there. Mm-hmm.